Yidra's version 11 release includes a new feature called bSIM, which aims to identify similar functions across multiple executable files. In this video, I'll take this new feature for a spin and show you how to get started with this helpful capability. Let's dive in. Now, in an earlier video, which I'll link below, I discussed the value of comparing malware to explore the similarities and differences between them. Performing this comparison can help identify new versions and variants of malware families. And in that video, I demonstrated how to use bindiff to compare executables. Today, I'll take a different approach and try out Ghidra's new bSIM feature, which uses Ghidra's decompiler to compare code in one program to potentially many other programs. I want to note up front that there is quite a bit of documentation for bSIM on GitHub. The same information is included in a Ghidra install, and I'll include a direct link to that documentation in the description. And while you can use bSIM from the command line, and the documentation includes instructions to do that, I'll focus on using the GUI because I think that'll be a bit more approachable for most people. Before we can use bSIM, we need to make sure it's enabled in the interface. So going to my desktop over here, first I'm going to go ahead and launch Ghidra. Next, I'm going to create a project, go to File, New Project. I'll create a non-shared project, and I'll call this bSIM Demo. Now we need to launch the code browser. And to do that, we need some actual files for analysis. Rather than start from scratch, we're going to take advantage of executables I discussed in earlier videos. For example, my video that discussed identifying code reuse focused on using a Conti and Lockpick Green ransomware samples. In my other recent video on API unhooking, which is a malware evasion technique, I used a Gazprom ransomware sample. Now in that video, the file was named file.exe, but I've gone ahead here on my desktop and renamed it to gazprom.exe for consistency with the other file names. So let's involve all three of those samples in our analysis today. By the way, if you looked at the compile time for each of these three samples, you would find that there is a nice spread across 2021, 2022, and 2023, with Conti being the first on that timeline, followed by Lockbit Green and the Gazprom sample. Now I'll go ahead and load each of these three samples into Ghidra and process them. And with the help of a bit of editing, we'll travel to the future where I have that done. All right, so now I have all three samples loaded and processed in Ghidra. You can see that I have three code browser windows open. I'm actually gonna close uh, two of them. I'm gonna close the Lockpit Green window and save those results. And I'll also go ahead and close the Gazprom sample results and save those as well. And now I just have opened the Conti window. So to continue enabling bSIM, because we haven't finished with that process just yet, I'm going to do the following. First, I'll go to File, Configure. Then you'll notice we do have a bSIM option here. I'll go ahead and click Configure, located right underneath the bSIM text. And now I'll click on the checkbox next to bSIM Search Plugin. So I'll make sure that this is checked. And then I'll press OK, followed by Close. So next, we need to create a bSIM database that will actually store information on the samples that we want to compare. By the way, the official documentation on this feature covers the various supported database backends. Today, we're using the simplest implementation, H2, which doesn't actually use a database server and instead uses a file on disk. Note that this approach doesn't support large collections of executables, so for a more robust option, you'll want to set up a database server as described in the documentation. So to go ahead and create our H2 database, we'll want to open up the script manager. To get there, we can go to Window and then Script Manager. And now at the bottom, we'll want to use the filter to go ahead and search for bSIM. You'll see there are a variety of options here. The script we want to choose is called Create H2 bSIM Database Script. So to activate this or run it, I'll just double click on it. And now we'll fill in some of these fields. So for the database name, I'm going to go ahead and call it ransomware DB because all samples we're looking at today are in fact ransomware and evaluating the similarities and differences across ransomware samples can be a useful exercise. Next, we need to choose a database directory. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder on the desktop. So I'll go to the desktop here and choose to create a new folder. And I'll call this folder bSIM ransomware. And since we're just getting started with this capability, we won't worry about the other options and fields for now. So just go ahead and click OK. Once again, we'll click OK here. 
And now we need to begin populating this database. We already have a Conti sample open, and among the three, it is the oldest sample by compile time, so perhaps this is a good place to start. As a reminder, when we reviewed the Conti sample in an earlier video, I briefly highlighted a function that I suggested contained some encryption functionality. That function was located at 405740, and if I scroll down, I'll eventually arrive at this large loop, which contains a series of add, XOR, and rotate instructions. It's actually an implementation of the cha-cha algorithm. Now, we're not gonna dig into the how or why of this algorithm today. Instead, we're gonna run with this theory that this function performs encryption and rename it to make note of that conclusion. So I'll go up here and scroll to the top. I'll highlight the function name. And if I use the context menu, I can right click and go to edit label, or I could hit L on the keyboard. And I'll rename this to AS underscore crypto. The letters A and S are my initials, and this is just the naming convention I commonly use to make it clear what functions I renamed. Renaming functions is typical during the reverse engineering process, and you'll see shortly that adding notes within the interface in this way is helpful when it comes to comparing functions. With Conti open in the code browser, I'll now go back to the script manager and find another bsim script. This one is called add program to h2b sim database script, and it will add information about this Conti samples functions to the ransomware database that we created earlier. I'll go ahead and launch this with a double click. And then I now want to choose the database that we created. So I'll go ahead and hit this button and I'll go to the desktop. I'll find the folder I created earlier, which is BCM ransomware. And I'll now choose that ransomware DB file and press OK. So as you can see here, it now recognizes that I've added information about this Conti samples functions to our ransomware database. I'll press OK. Now I'll go ahead and close down the Conti code browser and save all changes and then launch Lockbit Green. So now I have the Lockbit Green code browser open, and I want to run that same script in order to add its functions to our ransomware database. So I'll go back to the script manager. I can access it by just hitting this button here at the top, or I could go to the window menu as I went to before. But for now, I'll hit this button on the top. I've already searched for vSIM earlier, so it has that filter saved. And I'll now double click on add program to H2B. It already has my database chosen, and I'll press OK. In the background here, you'll see that it is now adding functions associated with now my Lockbit Green sample to our ransomware database. Once these functions have been added to the database, I can again press OK, and then I will close down this code browser. Now let's open the Gazprom sample in the code browser by double clicking on it. Now, as a reminder, in my video on API unhooking, we explored a function in this Gazprom sample that performs API unhooking. If you're not sure what that's about, definitely check out that earlier video, which I'll certainly link in the description. The API unhooking code was in a function located at uh, this address right here that I'll paste because I could not possibly remember that. So I'll jump to this location and I'm gonna go ahead and now rename this function to as underscore API unhooking. Again, I'm renaming this function because it's typical to do so during the malware analysis process and it'll prove helpful when we are evaluating BSIM output. So believe it or not, it's actually time to run some BSIM queries. Now, in order to execute a query, we need to register our BSIM database with Ghidra. To do so, we'll go up here at the top to the menu and choose BSIM followed by manage servers. Next, we'll click this green plus symbol. We'll add the server. And from these radio buttons, we'll choose file. And we'll now browse to our ransomware database, which is on the desktop under BSIM ransomware and I'll double click on this DB file and press OK. So now we've gone ahead and registered our BSIM database and I'll hit dismiss. By the way, if you wanna access BSIM documentation within Ghidra, all you have to do is browse to the BSIM menu option here, hover over any of these options and then hit F1 on your keyboard. This will launch Ghidra's built-in help and you'll see that it takes you to the section dedicated to BSIM where you have uh, lots of documentation here, very similar to the GitHub link that I'll include in the description. So my goal here is to compare functions in my Gazprom sample with functions in my Conti and Lockpit Green samples. Since I'm doing comparisons relative to this Gazprom sample, I don't actually need to add it to the BSIM database, although I would want to do that at the conclusion of my analysis so that future BSIM comparisons have access to this Gazprom functionality. Now, when starting a comparison, I could choose to compare one function in this sample with all functions in my ransomware database or compare all functions in this sample with all functions in my database. Let's begin by comparing all functions in this Gazprom sample to all functions in the database. And to do that, I actually need to select 
all functions. So the shortcut to do it is simply to hit Control A on your keyboard, which I'll do now. So I've now selected all functions here. Then we'll go to BSIM here at the top and choose Search Functions. Once this dialog box appears, we first need to choose the appropriate BSIM server using this pull-down. So I'll click on this pull-down and choose our ransomware DB. And you'll notice here in this functions field that it says 644 selected functions, which are all the functions identified in this gas prom sample. It has some options here that correspond with various thresholds, but to get started, we're gonna just leave the defaults as is. Next, we're gonna go ahead and hit search. And now let's go ahead and discuss the output, which lists pairs of functions that are related to one another. So the function name column specifies the name of the function within the executable that we have open in the code browser. In this case, the gas prom sample. The matching function name column specifies the name of the function in another executable. And the exe name column contains the name of the executable where the matching function is located. And you can see this column refers to both conti.exe and lockbitgreen.exe. So we're comparing this one gas prompt sample to multiple other samples at the same time, which is pretty awesome. Now let's talk about the similarity column. It contains a value between zero and one and represents how similar the functions are. Values closer to one represent functions that have a strong relationship, while values closer to zero indicate a weaker relationship between two functions. The confidence column is used to judge the significance of a match. And based on my reading of the documentation, it isn't simply a measure of how confident BSIM is of the match, but of how important the match is. The documentation, for example, states, sharing rare features contributes more to this score than sharing common features. Bold, but cool. The confidence also has no upper bound. So it's not simply a number between one and 100. For this reason, it's helpful to sort BSIM output by confidence as you review its findings, and that's basically the default, which is great. And all of this is a reminder that this tool, like any comparison tool of its type, is meant to help explore potential similarities, which means a reverse engineer still needs to interpret the results and perform additional analysis to confirm similar functionality. All right, so now let's briefly turn to the bottom of the BSIM search results window, where we have one executable per row. The data within a single row represents the combined function level matches associated with the executable in that row. If I go ahead and uh, choose one of these rows and right click on it, there are a couple options I just wanted to briefly highlight. For example, I could choose load executable. And what this does here in the background is it actually loads a read only version of Conti.exe. I have it here in my listing view and you see it's now created a second tab, which allows me to more easily compare code in one sample versus another. If I right click again, I just wanted to highlight one more option that is filter on this executable. If I were to choose this option, which I won't do right now, you would only see comparison results between the primary executable, in this case, Gazprom and uh, Conti.exe. Okay, so moving back to the top of the window, let's review the function matches. As we review each of these rows, you might spot one of the functions we renamed earlier, which is AS underscore crypto. You might recall we renamed that within the Conti sample, and we suspected it was responsible for performing encryption. This means BSIM has identified a relationship between this named function and another function in Gazprom, which is referenced right here on the left-hand side. If I click on this function right here, and actually it's already brought me to that function here in the background uh, when I initially clicked on it, we have now arrived at that function ending in 4620. If I want to apply the name that I already typed within Conti to my gas prompt sample, I can actually do that by simply right-clicking and choosing apply name. You'll see in the background, it's now changed the name of this function right here. This also renames the function in the BSIM search results window. So you can see that now I have another reference to AS underscore crypto, where it's matched this function within Gazprom to yet another function now within lockbitgreen.exe. So this indicates that all three samples use a similar encryption algorithm. Now, you might recall I renamed that API unhooking function in my Gazprom sample. Unfortunately, it did not show up here in my list of matched functions. And I can even confirm that by simply in the filter here, searching for unhook, which was in the name of the new function name that I assigned. This was a bit surprising because I manually reviewed the Conti and Lockbit Green samples and found what appeared to be similar code in all three of those binaries. Let's take a closer look at this by first returning to the API unhooking function that I renamed in the Gazprom sample. So I'll close my BSIM search results for now and I'll jump to AS underscore API unhooking. 
Now I'm going to perform a comparison of just this function with all other functions in the ransomware DB. To do that, I'll just need to make sure that I've clicked somewhere in this function, even here is just fine. And next I'll go to bsim search functions. You'll notice my bsim server field here is correctly populated. And now the functions field is not populated with a number of functions. It's only the function where I've currently clicked, which is the unhooking function here. Notice that the appropriate bsim server is already chosen and the function is now only my API unhooking function. Now let's briefly turn to the options here, which specify thresholds that we previously just accepted the defaults for. Based on this current threshold, we know that the API and hooking function didn't show up in the results. So I'm gonna decrease the similarity threshold to see if there's any sign of it with that change. I'll update this uh, similarity threshold to instead of 0 0.7, 0 0.2. And now I'll click search. So now I see a reference to my API unhooking function and matches in both the Conti and Lockbit green binaries. But notice the similarity and confidence are rather low. Right, the similarity is around 0 0.26, 0 0.24, with a confidence in the 20s. If I wanted to more closely examine the relationship between this function's code in Gazprom with one of the matched functions, for example, maybe Conti, I could right-click on this first option and choose Compare Functions. As I scroll down, you'll see some highlights here with a couple different colors. The highlights represent differences. And you should check out Ghidra's documentation for more information on what each color represents. Now, I'm not gonna go over this comparison in great detail, but the bottom line is that even though both functions perform API unhooking in a similar way, there are differences in the decompiler output that result in it not being a strong match. So this is a situation where I would probably turn to Yara or Kappa to build a rule that would find API and hooking across these different samples. And in case you're wondering if Bindiff would have done a better job of matching up the API and hooking code across these samples, I did do a quick Bindiff comparison between the Gazprom sample and the Conti sample, and Bindiff did not identify the API hooking functions as a match. I hope you enjoyed this video describing how to get started with Ghidra's vSIM feature for identifying similar functionality. If this is a topic that interests you, you might find value in some of my other videos right here. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you wanna see more malware analysis videos, and I'll see you next time.